a uniform rod of mass 2.1 kilograms and length 0.6 meters is attached to the floor okay with a frictionless pivot is that a hinge i'm gonna say pin pivot pivot it is suspended by a string the initial angle of the rod with respect to the ground is phi which is also 35 degrees the string is then cut dun 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 what is the angular acceleration of the rod immediately after the string is cut. Ah, okay. So, we're going to draw a picture here. So we have something like this, something like that, and this is the rod, and it's forcing going down that direction. Nope, I'm going to say draw from the center of mass. So center mass is going to be in the middle because it's, you know, it's a straight rod. And so torque will be R cross F, because that's the definition of torque. We also know that torque is I alpha, where I in this case is moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. Basically, it's the um, it's like a weighted average of mass where it takes into account where the mass is. It's pretty much the rotational equivalent of mass. Um, so, the, um, let's see here, this will be mass times gravity. I like to write this R cross F as R perpendicular F equals I alpha. So this R will be this portion here. R perpendicular will be right here. And so we want this part right here. So we have R cosine of phi times force equals moment of inertia times alpha. So let's look at this real quick. So this is mass times gravity. That's going to be pulling the rod down. It's going to be acting at the center. The radius from the center will be L over 2. So this will be L over 2. It's acting downward. We want the perpendicular portion of that. So you're normally used to seeing cross product as sine of theta. But you had to be careful about which theta you're looking at. If we were talking about this angle right here, call that theta, because this one is phi, then it would be sine of theta, because that would give you this r perpendicular. That's why I like to think of things in terms of r perpendicular instead of necessarily cosine and or dot product and cross product. So that way, it's slightly less confusing about which angles you want to use. Okay, focus, focus. So we know change colors real quick. 90% of these angle problems are all in the setup. So we got, we know what L is, we know what 2 is, we know what cosine is, we know what phi is, we know what force is, that's mass times gravity. Um, we can figure out what I is, so let's go to the Wikipedia. Nope, not Wolfram. Lists of moments of inertia. So the one we want is a rod, length L, mass M, at the, um, rotating about the end right here. So, oop, didn't mean to do that. Rotating about the, about the end. Now, you're like, well, can't we just use the um, rotation about the center and then do a um, change of axis formula or parallel axis theorem? We could, but then that would just give us this answer right here. So one third ml squared. Okay, one third ml squared. Going back, I equals one third ml squared. Okay, right. And then L is the whole length of the rod here, because that's just part of what's assumed with it being pivoted at the end. Here we had to convert radius to L over two, but that's already assumed in this portion right here. Okay. So we're trying to decide for what? Alpha? Alpha. So rewriting this. This is what I mean by it's all in a setup. It's making sure you got all the terms correct and the pictures drawn correctly. So we have L over 2 cosine of phi times mass times gravity all over uh, moment of inertia, which is 1 third m l squared and it makes sense that the masses kind of cancel one of the l's will cancel 
and we're left with G. So this is, um, hmm, hmm. Okay, so I have three halves because when we're dividing by a fraction, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we have cosine of phi over L. Putting some numbers in there, then we have three halves, 9.8, cosine of, I think it was 35, 35, that's good. Well, I'm pretty much indifferent, just it's good that I knew what it was. And then the L is 0.6, so 0 0.6. All right, we'll use our calculator, clear mode, go to the degrees. Enter, second quit. I'm going to do 1.5 instead of 3 halves times 9.8. I'm going to throw in a 1 just to, because I can. Times 35 divided by 0.6. And we get 20.09 equals 20.09. And this is alpha, which is angular acceleration, so it's going to be radians per second squared. See so what the possible answers are. Aha, so I'm going to call it this one 20.1. So when we round 0 0.09 up, we get 0.1. So one of the key points here, when I talked about earlier, was this phrase immediately. The reason immediately is important is because this R perpendicular changes as the rod is falling. So it's actually going to accelerate because this R perpendicular is going to keep getting bigger and bigger over time. Force will stay the same, moment of inertia will stay the same, but R will go up, which means it's actually going to accelerate as it's falling, which feels unusual, or the acceleration is getting bigger as it's falling, which feels unusual when you think of, you know, you drop a rock, then it just falls straight down and it has the same acceleration. It's a constant acceleration on the way down. That doesn't work here. This constant, this acceleration isn't constant. So that's why they had to put in the word immediately in there so you knew it's not like, well, what's the acceleration halfway down? So that is that is why that word is there. And it's good to kind of be like, okay, that's what this, that's what the problem's asking. That's some of the nuance that got thrown in. Okay, what is the angular velocity of the rod just before it becomes horizontal and hits the ground? Okay, so there's gonna be a couple thoughts that come through your head. So your first is, oh, well, the I know my kinematic equations, A equals constant, V equals AT plus V naught, X equals one half AT squared plus V naught T plus X naught. And like, well, we have the angular equivalence of this. So you say alpha equals alpha, omega equals alpha T plus omega naught and theta equals one half alpha t squared plus omega t or not t plus theta naught. Now your first thought process, eh, let's see, do I need any of this? I don't think I need any of this. This is going to go away. Oop, free up some board space. This is a good idea and a good thought process, but the problem here is this this part right here is not true. So when you derive the next two equations using um, integration with respect to time, those aren't going to be true either. And so this actually doesn't work because it, as we talked about earlier, the acceleration is getting bigger. But I'm going to try and solve it this way because we're looking at angular velocity just before it becomes horizontal, which you think, okay, we can use this one. I think we can use that one. Oh, no, no. So when we combine these, we get omega, um, omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. So this isn't another kinematic equation. This is just a combination of the 2 and the 3. Basically, you solve for t and then plug it into the next one, and you get this one. I call this kind of the fourth kinematic equation which is kind of generous because, well, calling alpha constant really isn't an equation. It is, but it's not, 
It's not as deep as one would expect when you hear the word equation. Mmm. Delicious. And then this one isn't new, so it's kind of disingenuous to call it its own equation. So really there's basically two kinematic equations. One you can derive, and then one's kind of a given. So we could use this equation to solve it. Now this is going to give us the wrong answer, but it's still fairly interesting. So we know that that'll be zero. So the omega final squared, the speed just becomes horizontal, will equal two times our alpha, 20.1, 20.1 times the change in theta. Well, we'll go from 35 degrees to zero, so the delta difference will be 35. But do we have to be in radians? Imagine that probably has to be in radians. Does it have to be? I don't. Hmm. Wait a sec. Do, we, do they want the answer in radians per second? They do. So just keep the same units. This has to be in radians. This will be 35. Um, let's see, it has to get bigger, so we'll do 2 pi over 360. Yeah, I'm going to call that 180. There we go. So this is, this is what we'll have. Then we'll take the square root of that, and that should give us the answer. So we'll have on, ooh, answer's right up there. Ah, multiply by 2 times 35 times 3.1415 divided by 180, and this gives us an answer like that. And that'll be the square, omega squared, we get 4.95. Omega equals 4.95 radians per second. So the issue here then is this alpha is too small because we know it's going to, the acceleration is going to get bigger as it falls because the torque gets bigger because the perpendicular R gets bigger. And so we have this omega equals 4.95 which is too small, but you know, it doesn't fall that far. It's pretty close. And so we look over here, we're like, well, it's not gonna be that one. So these are our possibilities. The one that's closest is 5.3. It's probably gonna be that one. So that is one way you can kind of wing it if you don't have too much, you don't have a lot of time and you have excessive understanding, but a disregard for correct answers. Okay. Now the real question is, well, gave us all this way of doing it the wrong way, how do we do it the correct way? Well, conservation of energy. So we look at this and we say energy potential initial plus energy kinetic initial equals energy potential final plus energy kinetic final. We're going to say that um, starts off at rest, which it does because it's tied to a rope. So that's going to be zero. And we're going to say that the, ener the energy potential is defined as zero at the bottom. So we have energy potential initial equals energy kinetic final. We're converting kinetic energy to, or we're converting potential energy into kinetic. So our potential energy is going to be mass times gravity times height. So MGH which in this case will be, okay, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna do right energy kinetic. So one half I omega squared. This is, so when you think of energy kinetic, you th usually think of one half mv squared. Well, if you convert all of that to a single point, um, if, you, if you assume it's a point and you look at the kinetic energy of a point and you convert it to angular, so v equals omega r, I equals mr squared for a point, then what you're left with when you plug that all in is I omega squared. And you can intuitively look at this and be like, okay, that kind of feels right because I is basically mass and omega is basically speed, but in angular. So intuitively it makes sense and mathematically it makes sense. So it shouldn't be too hard to kind of memorize. So then we have mgh, well the height is going to be um, L over two times sine of theta. And I, what, where did that come from? Well, we're gonna look at all the mass basically at this point right there. And so that's, this distance will be L over two, this will be theta, and then to find that height will be the sine of theta, Sokotoa if you will. 
So we have mg L over two sine of theta equals one half. And we already had I, oh, we had it over here, missed it. Okay, so it's gonna be one third m, oh, better, m L squared times omega squared. Okay, I'm gonna verify that real quick. So looking back at our moments of inertia, one third ML squared, I was right. One third ML squared. And we don't have to divide the L by two because that equation automatically assumes that it's at its end of a rod. So before we have to divide by two for finding the center of mass, that doesn't apply to this moment of inertia here. Okay, so then we're going to do some simplifying. So the twos will go away. Um, one of the L's will go away, the mass will go away, and we're going to be left with omega squared equals G sine of theta times 3 times 3L. Three so we have a, no, times 3 divided by L. It kind of makes sense. It kind of feels like a um, bigger stick would fall slower. Hmm, does that feel right? Does that feel right? Three comes up, L goes down, two goes away. Yeah, let's go for this. Let's go for this. I'm feeling confident and arrogant. So make sure we're still in degrees. We are three times 9.81 times sine of 35 divided by, I think it's 0.6, gives us 28. Second square root, second answer, gives us 5.304, 5.304. Make sure the length actually was 0.6. It actually was, so we're good, we're good there. Come back down here, 5.304. And the answer we guessed with our terrible approximation turned out to be adequate. So 5.3 radians per second was the answer. If we solved it assuming a constant acceleration, which it's not, but it's, uh, you know, we would have gotten 4.95, which is just a little bit less. So I find that interesting. So that's how I'd approach this kind of problem. Um, you really have to do these kind of problems. You have to do a few of them and really kind of internalize what's going on. Um, there's a handful of formulas and you just gotta, you know, memorize them. Things like, Energy kinetic is one half I omega squared. Uh, torque equals R cross F, which also equals I alpha. And these have their analogs to the linear world, and you really have to understand those equivalencies because some of these uh, angular momentum, angular rotation type questions, they get crazy hard. So it's really important to have a strong foundation in the basic fundamental formulas so that you can work through these in a timely manner and not get too confused. Hope that helped. I will see you on the next one.